serious, lawyers of Reddit, what's the dumbest thing you've seen take place in front of the judge? Attorney, when was the last time you did grugs? Defendant on stand, checks watch. I had a judge ask my client if he could pass a drug test. He answered he could, and was sure because he hadn't smoked in 30 days. Case had been pending for 4 months. Saw one defense attorney demonstrate twerking during closing arguments of an assault with intent to kill trial. DUI Dway drug defendants show up to criminal court with beer weedy frick the police t-shirts constantly. Or their pockets. It's like, dude, this isn't your first, second, or third trip to the courthouse. You know there is a security screening at the entrance. Maybe it's not the best idea to put your drugs through the x-ray scanner. Which is even more amusing because such substances wouldn't set off the metal detector if kept on their person. During the direct examination of the defendant the PD kept asking leading questions. After 5 or so sustained objections in a row the judge had enough and sent the jury out of the room to yell at the PD. During the cross, about 10 minutes later, the judge again sent the jury out to yell at the defendant for trying to tell his story instead of just answering yes or no questions. Not to mention he was clearly lying through his teeth. Also, the defendant was recorded committing the crime. So yeah, he was later found guilty. I was in front of a judge for oral argument and the other side, proper, failed to show up. The judge called him and made him argue against our motion while driving and on his cell phone. The judge spoke for a minute setting up the arguments for the guy, basically leading him to the core argument and what he should be saying if he wanted to get our motion denied. After a few moments of silence, the guy responds, Judge, I'm too stupid to understand what you just said, that ended the argument quickly and in our favor. I mean, bonus points for honesty. Personal story, I was sued once, well, they meant to sue me but actually sued my uncle, same career, named him in the documents and served him, me, being young and clueless, thought I should go to the trial just in case, my uncle told me I absolutely should not, now here's where the opposing attorney screwed up, they never once tried to interview or talk to me, or my uncle lol, or they would have realized their mistake, day of the trial, my uncle actually made it to the stand. From the way I heard it, questioning was hilarious. Were you working on blah blah day? Number. Please read this payroll statement. Doesn't this payroll statement say you were working? Number. Look at this highlighted line. Isn't your name RVW260? Yes. Then you were working. Number. This says KVW260 was working. My uncle said even the judge was laughing as he immediately tossed the case. Non-US lawyer. We once had a client who was arrested for fraud. The problem was his arrest warrant was riddled with errors. Half the time his name was changed to someone else's. The dates were wrong. And it ended by declaring the arrest warrant on the basis of robbery not fraud. The client was actually, egregiously, guilty of committing fraud, but he walked a free man because here the arrest warrant is to be written with the accused's full name. The exact crime he is being accused of in the date and place of said crime. Lesson to DAs and judges. Don't copy paste without proofreading. People finding religion in front of a judge at sentencing. The judge would always respond with, God may have forgiven you, but the state has not. That judge was a boss. Firm. Fair. And a total badass. One guy I saw said your honor, I haven't been drinking anymore. I have been clean for 6 months. God as my witness the judge responded. Well a lot of people say that but the funny thing is, not once have they ever been able to bring him in to testify. The dumbest thing I've seen is a guy show up for not doing his community service in a shirt that said, I'm not lazy, I just don't like to work. Judge asked him about it and he said it was his only clean shirt. Everybody had a good laugh even the judge. Ha ha ha. 30 days in the county pen. Seconds after being served with a protection from abuse order, opposing party flipped off the person who had obtained the order, and seconds after that approached her and asked if they could at least talk about it, promptly arrested. I'm doing jury selection on a civil case in California. It is going to be a long trial 6 weeks so the judge is giving jurors a lot of latitude if they claim any hardships for serving that long. 
After about 30 minutes of voir dire, which ended up taking 3 days and several panels, one guy stands up and says in very broken English that he can't follow. The judge asks him if he speaks English well enough to render a fair verdict and he looks confused and says no. The judge thanks him for his service and dismisses him from the panel. In perfect English accent now gone. He says thank you very much your honor. Where should I put my badge before I leave? Judge found him in contempt and ordered him to stay for jury duty for the next week. Usually you just stay for one day if you don't get picked for a jury in that day, your service is over. During a plea hearing on a prostitution charge, the state proceeds to give the narrative of events. The sar starts to get a little uncomfortable trying to describe the specific act that led to the arrest. We all know the line he's reading is sucked his slong dong, but he's trying to find a nice way to say it for the record. He finally goes, where she then, UHH, proceeded to perform, UHH, fellatio. As soon as he says fellatio, the defendant stands up and straight up yells, I didn't do any of that French crap, I gave him a blowjo. Client said to judge, well that's your opinion, it went as badly as you'd expect. Crazy but sad, we had an elderly local attorney introduce an exhibit into a divorce hearing. Of course, we object to it. Somewhere in his argument into why it should be admitted, he got turned around and started objecting to his own evidence. Another time, a guy trying to get leniency on his fourth driving on revoke told the judge, your dad and my dad were cousins. We are family aside from the fact that that situation would also make the judge's cousin. In a small county, everyone are cousins far enough down the line. Unfair dismissal case. My client was summarily terminated for no reason. She recorded the dismissal on a dictaphone. The torrent of misogynistic hateful abuse her boss spewed at her was unbelievable. He also assaulted her as she was removing the hands-free phone device from her car. Repeatedly slammed her leg in the door causing a fracture all the while screaming at the top of his lungs frick you. You piece of crap. Suffice to say we played that tape a million times in cross-examination. UHH. I hope there was more charges than just unfair dismissal. It was more what didn't take place. I was working for the DA's office and we had a guy scheduled to appear for a vandalism charge. The guy had a long history of minor offenses, but the judge was in a lenient mood that day, so the guy was probably going to get off light. At the scheduled time, he hasn't shown up. His lawyer tells the judge he hasn't heard from the defendant that day. We wait. 10. 20. 30 minutes. At the half hour mark, the judge is furious. She angrily tells the lawyer to get out and find his client and get him before her, no matter what it took, or she'd rain heck down upon the defendant. An hour later, the lawyer slinks back into the courtroom. The judge sees him and interrupts another lawyer to call him up to the podium. The poor lawyer proceeds to tell us that the defendant didn't show up because he was actually sitting in jail two counties over, having been caught trespassing the night before. Needless to say, that defendant got the book thrown at him. At the end of a DWI trial, involving a pretty major wreck, in which the defendant was found guilty, the judge asked the defendant if he had anything he wished to tell the court during the sentencing phase. The guy thought for a second and said, Your honor, I'm real sorry, normally I drive a lot more careful when I'm drunk. Had a client toss his car keys on the defendant table moments before sentencing for his fourth hour. Judge asked how he got to court, without blinking said I drove. Why good way to get to quick bail jumping charge for violating his no driving bail condition. For anyone else who was wondering, that's operating while intoxicated. We all forget to turn off our phones in court, but I once faced off against a lawyer whose phone rang right while he was in the middle of making his final submission to the judge. Even that might have been forgivable if he hadn't interrupted his submissions to take the call. A lot of clients want to speak up but judge, you don't understand, but giving them the look of death and a jab in the ribs usually shuts them up pretty quickly, they're usually pretty okay. I found this gem doing some research one day, quoted from the case, as is evident from the foregoing excerpt from the transcript, the judge would not permit the appellant to speak to the issue of judicial bias, the appellant was agitated, the judge was, no doubt, frustrated, 
This exchange culminated in the appellant choosing to disrupt the proceedings by commencing to disrobe. The appellant described her actions to the judge as a form of non-violent protest which would continue until the judge would hear her motion for judicial bias. Wish I was there for that one. I do family law. Told 11 clients in a row that they could be drug tested, 5 panel P test, you need to be clean for about a week, as part of the custody evaluation process, 7 of them failed. You need to be clean for a week to pass everything but toker. It is detectable by a 5 panel for something like 2-4 weeks depending on how often you smoke. <laughs> Lawyer here. I had a case where I was suing a lesbian on behalf of her former lesbian partner. It was a relationship property case. The one who was being sued put an issue whether they had even been lovers. Or whether my client was just a flatmate or boarder in her home for the several years they lived together. I had no idea how I was going to prove that but it turned out my client had saved all of the soppy love notes that her partner had left on the fridge. Most of which were I love you you little squishy oyster and other rebel descriptions. That issue sunk pretty quickly once the box of those were produced. I've seen a woman pee herself. Situation wasn't so tragic to warrant it, but she was sent back to jail. So understandable. A man called the judge by only his last name, which is great if you think he'll reciprocate the upcoming fist bump. A large number of high, drunk, and other people say, this is bulls also not a great technique in court like the first two. But I've got a pretty good one, so hope this isn't buried. Husband and wife are going through a divorce and are having a custody hearing. Basically, the attorney A is representing the father who wants to be able to have some rights to see his son, but mother has already been awarded full rights. Father's attorney is super passive aggressive against the mother's attorney, really rubbing everybody the wrong way. Eventually the mother's attorney snaps and quips back. If he was as good of a father and husband as you claim we wouldn't be here would we father's attorney has some dumb butt reply and the judge starts losing his cool. Another few comments later and the judge ends the hearing. No adjudication. Just takes the filings and demands that the parties get out of his chambers. This wasn't in the courtroom itself. In the hallway the mother's attorney loses his crap. Starts yelling at the other attorney. He yells back. They get into a full on yelling match in the courthouse. Then the father who is 230 LB plus steps between them to entreat them to chill out. Starts telling both his lawyer and the wife's attorney that they are acting like children. People in the courthouse are giving them looks, assistants peeking out of doors, and the wife steps in. You're both acting like a couple of kids, soon to be ex-husband, and I can handle this on our own. Then the couple who is in the middle of a vicious divorce step aside, talk for a few minutes, and walk back. He's going to take... Son, Tuesday night, you two she points at the attorneys do whatever you need to do with the judge. I don't know what happened with that case, but it warmed my heart to see a father step between the two trained legal professionals and impress his wife so much that they were able to work things out. The sad part, the husband's lawyer saw it as a win for him because his conduct put his client in a position to break up the fight and show her that he is a great guy. Update, for those asking. This was in 2009. I don't know the final disposition of the case, just that the mother agreed to let the father spend some time with their son. And yes, this is a true story. I will never forget we had a defendant bust into the court from the local jail. His case was called and he promptly walked up the podium, looked the judge dead in the eye, and crap his pants. A uh, jumpsuit. He knew he was going back to prison and just wanted to cause as much havoc as possible. People were gagging and there was a general sense of did that just happen in the air. I'm going to start off with some context. This event took place on the first day of a murder trial in the Hong Kong High Court. Now the official language used in the High Courts of Hong Kong is English and not Cantonese. The judge for this particular case was British but the lead prosecuting attorney was from Hong Kong. Whenever he spoke, the judge had a hard time understanding him. To make things worse, the trial and evidence packet composed by the prosecution was a complete mess and did not include an English version. During the opening statement, the lead prosecution attorney decided that he needed to grab his colleague and act out the murder in order to get the message across. This was not pre-planned and to make a long story short, the judge adjourned about an hour in to postpone the trial in order for the prosecution to sort out this mess. That was the dumbest thing I've ever seen in a trial and I can't imagine how desperate the prosecution was to do such a thing. 
a case where a large gangster type defendant was accused of slashing the throat of a small skinny guy. The defense counsel made him wear a large coat to conceal his size, and brought in an interpreter to slowly translate each word of the proceedings because he had absolutely no understanding of English. Ten minutes into the trial a cell phone goes off and rings for about a minute. The judge is furious and the ringing is amplified in the large courtroom. The hearing stops and everyone is looking around trying to figure out where the sound is coming from. Suddenly the defendant stands up and pulls the phone out of his pocket. It is still ringing, but only louder. The defendant then yells hey judge, I don't know how to turn my phone off. The prosecutor's response when the judge ruled a document would not be admitted into evidence. But your honor, we need that. My favorite was a defense attorney in our courtroom giving his sentencing colloquy. This was for a charge of getting intimate with a minor. The attorney claimed that the defendant and the victim started out as friends, and then physical intimacy just broke out. The judge responds what? Like a rash the defense attorney didn't have much to say after that, which was surprising by itself. On a hearing regarding a restraining order requested against him, a man raised the defense of BB trip in restraining order granted. Good bless General Sessions Court. My mentor and boss continually picks his nose in court. I am continually horrified. Attorney, did you call the defendant a busted B? Witness, yes, I did because she was going to jail. Attorney, that's not nice. Is that a nice thing to say? When I was in law school, my school had a mock trial program that took place at the local county court, where the judges were actual judges, prosecutors, and attorneys from the local area. So one day, a mock trial is happening, and one student, who was a law student but not in the mock trial program, is acting as a witness being questioned on the stand. This person was getting a little too rude acting in character, so the judge who was an actual judge, so the judge admonished him to tone it down. The student didn't listen so the judge took them to a little side chat and told him he really needs to stop. The student blows up at the judge and tells him that he doesn't have to listen to a petty state court judge and proceeded to verbally assault the judge. Judge filed an assault charge. Student was kicked out of school for damaging the school's relationship with the local courts, and I would imagine likely never got admitted to another law school or, if they did, would have a hard time passing the character and fitness test to practice law in that state. Lots of weird people in law school. My school had several junkies who barely walk through the door. Stories like these are my favorite memories. This is a much longer story but I'm on mobile. Anyways a guy came into court on a pervert charge. His friend is a lawyer who comes into court with a black suit, snakeskin boots, and a bolo tie. It is glorious how slimy he looks. When he gets up to talk to the judge he says, I've known John for 20 years and he is a good man. But he is not a pervert, sir. I should know because I am one. I miss working for the da. So at the arrest stage, when cautioned, in the UK any response you give anything you say under caution is recorded and given as evidence. One of these guys is arrested for a scrap and kicks off in custody, calling us feng this, c word that. One custody officer goes sir, calm down you realize everything you say will be recorded and told to the magistrate. He replied oh frick the magistrate and their freaking court. The magistrate is a c. Court day comes. I'm called to provide evidence to show that the man was badly mannered and aggressive in nature. Amongst other statements and actions he made, I say your worship, whilst in custody, the defendant did not calm, and, custody officer, is attempts to calm him by warning him we would provide what he says as evidence to yourself was met with oh frick the magistrate and their freaking court. The magistrate is a C. Well that was the end of my evidence and the court retired for a lunch break. The magistrates went to town on him and sentencing. I only have one was in court during a sentencing and the defendant, not my client, approaches the bench with his attorney. The judge begins to go through the sentencing colloquy and the man says, Frick you judge. The judge, a female, was pretty shocked and just said excuse me. I said frick you judge, ain't no woman told me what to do in my life. Sentence me to whatever. She just sat there dumbfounded for a second then, alright fine mister. I hereby sentence you to life in the penitentiary. Well that sounds freaking fantastic. Defendant was already doing a life without parole sentence and had this charge pending when he received his first sentence. 
he knew he was basically untouchable and no matter what the judge did his sentence could never get worse. One of my pro bono clients pulled out nail clippers and proceeded to clip her nails during oral argument. Two good stories from arguing motions. 1. I was arguing a case should be dismissed because a decade long delay. Sketchy opposing counsel says to me, where's your authority to show that delay is long enough? Judge says right here, case dismissed and points to his file. 2. Opposing counsel asked if I was crapping him when I said despite the typo the motion could still be granted. I crap you not he cursed during oral argument. When I was a public defender, I represented a woman in felony DUI trial. It was a felony only because her license was already suspended when she got the DUI. Her back was .30. Yes, not 03 and there were empty vodka bottles rolling around her car. I found case law that said the state must prove she actually received notice that her license was suspended in order to charge it as a felony. On my motion after the state's case, again after the defense's case, and again after the jury verdict, the judge grudgingly had to dismiss the felony part because the state couldn't prove the woman ever received notice that her license was suspended. The judge made a very clear accord, however, that the conviction for DUI was solid and unaffected by dismissing the felony. Whatever, we beat the felony, which was the difference between 4 months in prison and 24 hours in county jail. That's not the dumb part. This woman was knocking futs and swore she wasn't drunk. Bulls. She was drunk every time I ever talked to her, and no one would dismiss her case. She filed a lawsuit against the public defender's office, my supervisor personally, me personally, the county superior court, and the judge personally. She would show up at the courthouse every day to read her file and harass the court staff. The judge eventually barred her from coming to his court without written permission. She started wearing wigs and big hats and sunglasses to skulk around his court unrecognized. No idea what happened to her after that. Her back was 3.0. Yes, not 03. Surely it must have been 0.3, or on a different scale from the conventional one. Around 0.5 is where there's a high chance of death from alcohol poisoning. We had an expert witness testifying about gunshot residue. He was asked about how long such residue would remain on a given surface. His response, before the court, well, I like to say it's like the difference between love and herpes. Herpes lasts forever. Mechanics of Reddit, what's the dumbest thing you've seen someone do to their vehicle? My old mechanic had a guy come in with a Ford probe. He claimed it was low on oil. They take the dipstick out and the whole stick has oil on it. He checks again with the same result. The guy took the oil cap off and looked into down into the hole and said see it is low. He had put 3-4 cases of oil in the motor trying to fill the entire block up. The previous mechanic didn't know how to patch an exhaust leak and had tried to weld a rockstar can around the leak. The leak caused the second oxygen bank to fail, which is why they tried to patch it with the can. Not a week later the bank read a failure again. You don't weld it on. You use some sealant and a couple of jubilee clips. This probably won't be the worst one in this thread. I used to know a 30 year old who would put the car air freshener duct taped outside the exhaust, kind of just dangling in front of the opening. His logic was it makes the exhaust smell better for pedestrians. That's oddly sweet. Had a customer once who had their oil light come on and couldn't figure out how to top the oil up. He thought it might have worked like his boat motor so he poured a jug of oil in his fuel tank. Not a mechanic, but former service writer. Woman comes in for an oil change, some common minivan, nothing out of the ordinary. Walked by the van while it was up on the rack, and noticed one of the tires was nearly bald in the middle, cord showing. Textbook over inflation. I check the tire pressure, was well over inflated, then looked around the vehicle. Two more tires were in exactly the same state, over inflated and showing damage from it. The fourth was a bit under inflated, no glaringly obvious tread wear. Pointed it out to the customer when she came back, asked if there's any reason three tires would be over inflated. Long story short, she was occasionally seeing a low tire light on the dash, no indication of which tire just low tire told her husband and he just aired up all four tires happened again fixed the same way rinse and repeat so over time they kept the tire with the leak going but managed to ruin the other three buy a tire pressure gauge if your car doesn't give you per tire pressure readings 
I wrench on bikes, not cars, and at least once a month we have someone come in that put chain lube or grease on their brake rotors because they were squealing, and now wants to know why their brakes aren't grabbing. Completely fill their engine with oil and wonder why it's smoking and then locked up. My mom filled the oil fill with water when the car was overheating. She said that she knew it said oil but she didn't know where else to put the water. The list is long. Removing PCV hose, assorted vacuum lines, O2 sensor, ETC thinking they are going to get better performance, cutting a wire under the dash to hook up a stereo, then bringing the car to me to fix the tail lights, pouring 3 quarts of oil in but the dipstick still shows low because they put the oil in the radiator, putting gasoline in a diesel truck, again. That again just tops it all off, you would think people learn, but sometimes not, and those stories can make the best jokes. I bought my car off a guy for $785. For all intents and purposes it worked fine, but the guy said that it overheated almost daily. 1999 Nissan Sentra, manual, 135k miles. If it didn't overheat it would have been closer to $3 4k, maybe even more. I bought it anyways, cause I could try fixing it and cause I was desperate for a car, my old one died and I live 10 miles from work, so I brought the car home, the guy filled the radiator per an agreement we made, and the overflow tank was already empty, I started feeling along the coolant piping, and when I came to the thermostat sensor housing I could stick my fingernail inside the gap, my fingers came out soaking wet with coolant, went to a parts store, spent $10 on a housing gasket, $3 on some liquid gasket, and $50 on new oil, a new oil filter, a new air filter, radiator cleaner, and coolant. Spent an entire day putting that gasket in, the reason it took so long is a freaking story and a half that was all about Murphy's Law. Changed the oil, cleaned out the radiator, and I haven't had any trouble since. All in all, a perfectly working car for about $850. I kinda feel bad for the dude who sold it to me. Did a co-op at a shop back in high school. Guy complains about how his car doesn't sit straight. We pull it in and don't even need to put it on the lift to realize that he has 17 inch rims on one side and 15s on the other. Took me about 45 minutes of explaining to him why cars aren't made like that before he told us that he'd be taking his business elsewhere. On a side note the side with the 15s were 100% bald, like racing slick bald and everything in that car was falling to pieces. I have too many stories of crap I found in people's cars there, but this one has to be my favorite. Worked as a car cleaner at a dealership one summer in high school. Guy towed in a relatively new, top of the line Corvette he had bought there sometime before I started. He was pee that it had died on the road and been running like crap before that. Ranting and raving about he spent all this money and it only went x months years before completely breaking down. One of my work buddies got it up on a lift and started looking it over. He opens the oil drain plug and nothing comes out. He pulls apart the engine and the oil could now be best described as glue. Owner talks to the guy and asks when the last time he changed the oil was. Guy had zero idea what he was talking about. He had no idea that you had to do that. He assumed you just added gas and that's the only thing you needed to do. The engine was a complete loss, which meant the car was a complete loss to him. If there's one thing I can take away from this post, it's that it's pretty astonishing how many people don't know or care to get their oil changed. Not a mechanic. Some years ago, here where I live there was a fairly widespread craze of mixing oil. I don't remember the type, but it wasn't at all related with the engine like sunflower oil or something like that, with diesel for better fuel consumption. The thought was that this type of oil would burn anyway, and mixed with diesel it would give the same kilometers for less money. Of course it wasn't the brightest of ideas, so I remember that despite being fairly young. I remember strongly advising against this practice. My mother didn't listen to me, and proceeded to top her Mitsubishi Pajero Turbo. Great car for fuel economy, I know, with whatever oil she used. Now, to be fair the car held up pretty well despite the abuse, which it's because it was a tank. However it eventually succumbed. If I remember correctly the fuel pump completely failed and had to be replaced entirely, but I might be forgetting stuff. The funny thing is though that the mechanic, 
After looking at the engine for about 3 minutes or something like that, asked almost angrily to my mother if she was using the oil. When questioned how he knew that he said something along the line of, it's the fourth this week that comes in with this issue. I had a guy bring his motor swapped late 80s F150 in for some transmission work. These came factory with either a 300 straight 6, 351 V8, or 460 V8. He put 2.3 liters carbureted 4 cylinder out of an old Ranger in it. The reasoning behind the swap was that it had improved fuel mileage at the cost of some speed. The thing could barely move under its own power. If you floored it, it would top out at about 55 miles per hour, wide open, and take a good minute or two to get there. Had a guy show up at a tire shop bragging about being blackout drunk and needed his tire changed. He had his spare on with 3 stroke 5 lug nuts. He had tightened them by hand and they backed off. Had to replace all the studs. Folks would come in asking for tire repairs, patches, on tires that were literally cut in half. Like you drove on the rim for a week split down the middle in half. They'd get so offended when I explained they not only needed a tire, but now a rim as well. I've seen a fake intercooler on a Sunfire, paper mash used instead of Bondo. The list goes on. Not a car mechanic, but I knew a guy who used self-tapping screws to fasten a roof rack to his car. Must have run out of duct tape. Not a mechanic, but a car enthusiast. Saw a couple of cars, where owners didn't know what basic maintenance was. Like no oil change, no brake pad change. The oil turned into jelly and you had to scrape it out. The most ridiculous thing were the brakes. My mechanic friend showed me the brakes of an elderly lady's car. The brake discs were gone, like almost completely wiped down to like 5-6mm. She said to him the car feels weird, while I brake. If that sweet little old lady wants to drive around like that nothing's going to stop her. Lady stated that her car said low coolant, so she filled up the coolant. She made it about a mile and the car started running terrible and cut off. Shop rollback picked it up. She filled up the coolant by removing the oil cap and topping the motor off with water. Let me tell you about Diamond Plate Guy and Focus Bro. Diamond Plate Guy had two things he used to modify his truck. A drill and a ton of diamond plate. It was an absolute base model V6 Ram 1500 with the exhaust chopped off, which I thought was bad enough until I opened the hood. He had drilled or glued diamond plate to every flat surface, air filter box, intake manifold, fan shroud, etc. This was 18 months ago. My eyes still haven't recovered, but this isn't the end. He had some crappy wheels that he had painted white himself. I know this because he painted the inside of the wheel where it seats to the hub, which caused them to seize to said hubs. I literally had to buy a bigger hammer to smack them off. Focus bro. Guy had a custom straight pipe, full Sparco race seats, 5 point racing harnesses, lowering springs, and a base model, automatic Ford Focus SE. I bet Focus bro would slip it into neutral at stoplight so he could take his foot off the brake and let it roll back. Giving the illusion on a manual to unsuspecting motorists. Not a mechanic but we do almost all of our farm equipment maintenance. Brother called during a hellacious snowstorm telling me hurry get over here and bring beer I arrive with bud lights in hand. He's got two lawn chairs under his carport. We get a beer and settled in our chairs out of the snow. We commence to watching his methed out neighbors that are higher than kites push this mustang. They're trying to push start it. After about 10 minutes we're hysterical. They had been trying for almost 2 hours. It was an automatic transmission. You need to send an invite out to the rest of us next time. I'll bring the snacks. Not a mechanic, but while sitting in the shop waiting for my own car to have work completed I witnessed a customer and their mechanic talking about the customer's car needing suspension repair. The customer had tried, unsuccessfully, to do the repair himself. The mechanic asked him why some lug nuts were missing and others were loose. The customer replied how he thought he would be helping the mechanic by loosening the tire for him. The customer had driven 20 minutes to get to the shop with the tire held on by a few loose lug nuts. Dude spending thousands of dollars modifying their pickups for a fruiting. 
even though they spend 99.99% of the time on highways and the furthest off of a road they ever get is a logging road that a stock forester could tackle with no problems, and then complain about extra crappy fuel mileage, and having to pay for new 35 inch knobby tires that only last 10k miles because they wear out super quickly if you drive mostly on pavement and having to replace their front wheel bearings every other year because those larger wheels and tires are a lot heavier than the stock ones. And being super surprised to learn that parts for a 3 stroke 4 ton pickup can cost multiple times more than the comparable ones for the small sedan they sold to afford their bro truck. Service advisor here. Hope it's okay I post this. Had this happen a few months ago. It's a copy and paste from my FB where I typically post stories like this. Customer brings in car last week Wednesday with shaking issue. Cool. Take care of some of the issues the car actually has. Leaves 10 times better. Issues include bad axles. TSB on diff. Dirty transmission fluid. Blown rear shocks. Needing oil service. Done and gone. We listed the recommendations still required but customer declined. Only did axle and diff fluid service. Today. Same customer. Over the phone. Customer. What in fucking heck did you do to my car? Me. What's the issue? Customer. The issue is back. And it's fucking 1000 x worst. What the heck did I pay you for? Me. Okay. Well if it is our repair that caused the problem we are more than willing to see what's going on. We didn't replicate anything after test drive. So unfortunately we can't determine it's the same issue without checking it out. A customer. I demand a tow truck to be sent out and you guys have to flip the bill on this. I'm not paying for this nonsense. Me. Sir. Not a problem. If it is work we've done we are happy to pay for the tow and correct the issues. But be advised. If the issue is due to the other recommendations or new issue. You will be responsible for the tow fee. Customer. Yeah that's fine. I know it's what you guys did anyway. Me. Okie dokes. Tow truck will be there within the HR. Tow truck picks car up. Notice his issue. Tells customer. Notes it on receipt. Customer signs and acknowledges it, coming back to this in a second. Get car, puncture on rear right outer tire sidewall, nice welt and gash the size of a penny, tire completely deflated. Tow driver noted this, told customer and wrote it out and had customer sign it. Grab air hose, hook up to tire, just wheezing air out. Me, well then, me, yes sir, you had a flat tire and you were driving on it. Customer, nope. Not possible, it left here fine, and I barely drove it home and it sat since I picked it up from you guys. Me. According to the receipt, you acknowledge the puncture with the tow truck driver and sign it off knowing it was flat. But we did install the spare, drove about 10 miles on street and FWY, and we cannot replicate the issue at this time. You can hear customer trying to find receipt, hangs up. Guess who just paid 75.00 on a tow bill? mechanic here. Lots of stories. One guy has OCD and got a license plate called too clean. Only let one guy in our shop touch his base model Dodge Dakota 2007. Had to double up on gloves and he would watch. Under sprayed his car with chrome spray. I work primarily on equipment. Operator calls us out to his machine saying he had a crack on his boom. Think the first arm on a large excavator. I get out there and the whole boom has broken off and is on the ground. My favorite though had to be the operator who blew a hydraulic hose in a forestry setting. Maybe $200 to change the hose. Decided he wants to walk the machine out to make the hose easier and runs a machine out of oil. Blowing up the hydraulic pumps. $26,000. Two travel motors. $8,000 each. And the auxiliary pump. $2,500 ish. The machine was down for 2 months for him deciding to walk an extra 50 meters out of the bush so he didn't have to walk the extra distance. I have tons of stories about lazy operators but this is probably the laziest lol. Bad snow day. For whatever frick reason we were open. Guy pulls up needing a flat repair. He pulled up in a way the car could be just pulled in. Co-worker goes to pull it in and can't stop. Slams into his box. Wasn't going fast enough to damage anything. Car had zero brakes. Say something to the customer oh the foot brake? That hasn't worked in years. You have to use the hand brake. We inspect the vehicle and discover it doesn't even have brake calipers in the front. With the hoses clamped off and not an ounce of brake fluid in the master cylinder. And the most surprising part, they didn't want to get the brake repairs done. 
Guy was convinced his tires were different sizes because they rotating at different rates. Like, he jacked up each wheel and put the valve stem at the top, went for a drive, and they were not lined up anymore. I had to explain it with chalk and string in the parking lot. A customer brought their vehicle to the dealership I used to work for an airbag recall. They had bedazzled everything on the interior dash, including the covers for the airbags on the steering wheel and on the passenger side. I'm not sure she understand the fact that airbags have enough power to turn anything into shrapnel. At least they'd look fabulous when they show up to the morgue. I worked at a Chevy dealer and now work at a Jaguar Land Rover dealer. I'm not surprised at people's stupidity anymore. More than once I've seen people add oil to the coolant reservoir. I've seen the inside of a motor where the customer never changed the oil since it was new and the car had 50xxx miles on it. The dumbest thing I see every day is people come in with broke suspension parts, ball tires and no brakes. They don't buy any of it and just want the oil change and insist we are trying to rip them off. But the same person will come in raising heck over a small safety recall and refuse to leave until it's done because the car's unsafe. Lady had a brand new at the time Subaru and was complaining about horrible gas mileage. People complain about gas mileage all the time and it's usually because of driving habits. I get the car in and it looked like she hit something in the road and ripped a big hole in the gas tank and all the fuel she put in poured right out onto the pavement. It was in fact a valid poor fuel economy complaint after all. Suru many people hammer on battery terminal ends. The types of terminals have changed with modern vehicles, but people still don't understand that batteries are lead and plastic. Don't beat and hammer on that crap, you will destroy your brand new $100 plus batteries, and no, there is no warranty if you smash it with a dang hammer. My dad once poured wiper fluid into where the brake fluid goes. It was my relatively new car so he wasn't familiar with it and also clearly not paying attention. He tried to tell me it was probably fine but I made him take it to a mechanic and pay to have it drained and fixed properly. I bet the mechanic had a good laugh that day. And my dad learned a fairly costly lesson about paying attention. Knew someone who sorta did the opposite. Put antifreeze in the windshield wiper fluid reservoir. Their reasoning. Antifreeze doesn't freeze so if I use it in the winter the windshield won't ice up. It was brutal. She didn't actually do anything. But a girl at my school noticed her check engine light came on. And she wasn't sure what to do so she started asking around. Teacher told her to take it to a mechanic and have them look at the engine. She goes, okay, where's the engine? Without missing a beat teacher responds. That compartment in front of the passenger seat that opens up. Glove compartment. Really? The whole thing ended with a class trip outside to her car where the teacher opened the hood to show her the engine. She asks which thing in there is the engine. My poor teacher used to work on classic cars, and I'm very sure he wanted to die. Comma my poor teacher used to work on classic cars, and I'm very sure he wanted to die. I too want to die from just reading this. I don't know much about cars but this is a whole new level of not knowing how cars work. Millennials of Reddit. What's the stupidest the problem with your generation as you have ever heard? Uh, somewhat related my wife went to a generational differences seminar, aimed at some PC sounding crap, where they discussed basically how to coexist with your co-workers decades older or younger than you to work effectively. The presenter read an article and it said the current workforce fears the incoming generation will enter the workforce feeling entitled, demanding a higher wage. With a work-life balance, the presenter then went on to ask can anyone guess which generation they were referring to pretty much the entire room said millennials with much disdain. The presenter corrected them and said actually the article I just read was from 1948. Turns out people will always hate the incoming generation. Forever. Guaranteed. When I did tech support for one of Australia's largest ISPs, in escalations, they only got to me if they actually had a legit problem, and not just forgot to turn the freaking computer on. I interacted with literally thousands of customers across a range of demographics, shown on their profile by age, as a form of identification, and distinct age base patterns began to emerge. Once you had resolved the issue, the different generations would typically respond like so. 1. The greatest generation. Oh. Thank you so much for your time and patience with a silly old duffer like me. I really can't keep up with all this technology. 2. Baby boomers. 
about fricking time. Now what am I getting in compensation for this inconvenience? I want you to put me through to complain to manager. 3. Gen X. Ah, there we go. Back online. That's great. Have a good one. 4. Millennials. Oh thank god. Thanks for getting it working. So how much do I have to pay for this fix? Nothing? Seriously dang. Thanks. The accuracy here made me shudder. The problem with your generation is, you kids don't know how to get in trouble anymore. When I was your age we'd have someone buy us beer and we'd sneak off to the woods or the lake and have a good time. But someone always got caught of course. Then you'd get grounded and have no TV for a week. Kids just don't do that anymore. I'm okay but I'm 30. My dad has told me so many stories of the stupid crap he and his buddies did in high school. All I could think was man if I did that I'd get arrested, convicted of something ridiculous, and would never have been able to get half the jobs I've worked. One I heard from a Vietnam vet was that we never had a mandatory military draft to weed out the weak ones and the whiners and that a war would do us millennials all a little good. I was talking to my boss about HQ and the $50,000 prize they were giving out, and he was saying how he'd go on a grand vacation and buy a big shiny car if he won. I told him I'd pay off my school and car loans and start a savings account. He laughed and proceeded to make fun of stupid millennials for not knowing how to handle money. K. That we don't buy silver flatware because we're too lazy to polish it. Don't want to buy the stupid knickknacks that they their parents bought, etc. I work in the antiques field so I hear that a lot. They always quote that statistic that we want to spend our money on experiences rather than things and I fail to see how that is a bad thing. Now maybe I am lazy but the idea of spending more money on something that requires more attention and upkeep but doesn't actually do its job any better is just, well, dumb. I'm not gonna buy myself more fruitless work to do. I was walking down the hallway at work and overheard the thing with millennials as they come and go whenever they want. How are we supposed to schedule a meeting when they refuse to have set hours as a millennial? I still work 8-5 like everyone else in the office. It was oddly specific, but generally incorrect. Maybe he was talking about an intern that's still in school? Well not quite answering the question. My friend's grandma made a comment yesterday about how millennials don't have china because we can't put it in the dishwasher and we don't like to hand wash dishes. I made a comment under my breath about how it's because china is expensive and not worth splurging on. Or my boss who made a comment about how millennials don't care about money. I've been looking for a new job since. The goddang participation trophies. We didn't ask for them. That was our parents idea. And yet somehow that makes it our fault for doing entitled, irrational things like wanting to be able to buy a home with a middle class income. Here's a thing that we insisted you get, that you probably don't even want, and we're going to blame you for getting, for the rest of your life, baby boomers. That we're killing the chain restaurant industry. My boyfriend and I don't eat out that much so, if we are going to spend the money to sit down somewhere and eat, we want to go somewhere that has good, original food. Also, isn't it the industry's fault for not keeping up with their new market? Millennials think the world owes them something and are always expecting a handout I work in social media for a food company. The only people who message and email us asking for free samples and products are firmly age 40 plus. Yep, anyone who's worked customer service knows the most likely culprit to be an entitled irrational human being is someone who's elderly or middle aged. Millennials aren't having enough children or consuming enough? Really? I thought we would have freaking been happy about the slowing of population grown in materialism. Well, we are. They don't have to be. Their happiness isn't my responsibility, and I don't need their approval. I just had this discussion with my sister this weekend. She said millennials act entitled. She didn't realize we are millennials. A lot of baby boomers seem to think a lot of things are our fault. Never mind that they've been the primary voting bloc for as long as we've been alive and then some. My dad has blamed me for voting away all our rights since before I could vote. My dad has told me before I'm not working enough and that my jobs aren't real. I have two real jobs that are paying me real money. My oldest brother also has two jobs that pays him significantly less, but I have never heard him harp on him.
My mom has this weird attitude that just because my work involves being in front of a computer all day somehow means that it's not a real job. Like, geez, just because you chose a line of work that requires you to be on your feet for at least half the day doesn't mean that people don't do pure mental work while sitting down. Anything that assumes millennials are still children young teenagers. Millennials and their obsession with free healthcare. Back in my day, we just died. Sounds great actually. Tuition is just as expensive. Not a millennial but Toys R Us Bain Capital blaming their bankruptcy on millennials not having children is absurd. I'm a millennial with two kids. Some of their stuff is okay, the furniture mostly, but their prices are absurd. It's easier to buy something cheaper on Amazon. I'm always thoroughly annoyed by the millennials are lazy complaints that boomers have. I've been called lazy and a freeloader by so many people because I still live at home with my parents. What they fail to realize is that I'm neither. I live with my parents because I don't have a family of my own yet and my parents would be royally fricked if I wasn't living there. I make more than my father does. I pay rent. I own and pay the insurance for the car that gets me to work, my father to work, my brother to work, and until recently my sill to work, she lost her job. It also gets my mom back and forth to wherever she needs to go, groceries, etc, and was responsible for getting my grandmother to her doctor's appointments prior to her passing. I paid to replace the septic tank at our house. I paid for a new refrigerator, stove, washer, and dryer when ours died. I paid to have our in shambles bathroom repaired. It's to the point that my parents have offered to put my name on the house as well. I stay with my family because I don't need to be on my own. And I love my family and don't want to see them struggle financially if I can help it. It just makes sense for us to stay together for now. But yeah, what a freaking freeloader I am. You don't live with your parents. Your parents live with you. I had an older customer at my restaurant tell me that millennials were ruining customer service. Because we're so laid back we don't complain enough and pretty soon the customer is always right won't mean anything anymore. So, what you're saying is that entitled baby boomer snowflakes are dying out and being replaced with chill customers? I'm failing to see the problem here, Linda. OMG, I've been complaining about that customer is always right comment for years. People abuse that crap way too much. I do agree with you. I hardly ever complain. People make mistakes. No biggie. Just fix the problem and don't be a dong. My grandma though, she'll cut you out in a second. Always calling the 800 number or demanding to talk to a manager. Blows my mind. When I was in college, like 2-3 years ago, we had an alumni come in that worked in sales for Fox. He started talking about how Fox has been struggling mightily to attract millennial viewers and that they're completely stumped on how to get us to watch them. Not 5 minutes later, he starts talking about how Fox has specialized workshops to teach employees how to work with millennials in the office because we're lazy and stupid and how we're the first generation that just doesn't want to work. Typical eye rolling crap. So yeah, I have no idea why Fox isn't attracting millennial viewers. Couldn't possibly be that they think so little of us that they think they need specialized trainers to work with us or anything. It's not we don't want to do work. It's we don't want to be abuse employees always expecting to out preform one another and say yes to everything in an environment where you are constantly told you are expendable. You gotta work to live but I'm not about living to work. A co-worker from a different department resigned, and a group of managers was trashing the decision. That generation has no loyalty, just a bunch of lazy millennials. I spoke up and said I was part of that generation, I was in fact a bit younger, and that it was kind of dumb to make generalizations based on age alone. One said something about how the former employee had seniority over me, so it was probably a matter of time for me. I pointed out that I had more seniority than the employee and that manager combined. She didn't believe me but asked the director later to confirm. She hopped jobs every 3 years and actually was working there when I first started and left for 8 years, yet blamed age and perceived laziness, and didn't want to be challenged on her mindset. I think the idea of company loyalty is absurd and outdated anyway. I'm sure there are some exceptions, but more often than not the company or organization doesn't give two licks about you. On a family vacation, while my siblings and I were making an observation on a dog in the back of a truck, 
My dad snapped and told us that millennials think that they can comment on everything and they need to learn to shut their traps. My siblings are Gen Z. I barely count as a millennial. Sounds like he's projecting his crappy childhood. They can talk about their struggles, but we're not allowed to talk about ours. Might not be the most stupid but the most annoying to me is the problem with your generation is you're all whiny snowflakes who are too worried about feelings. This is always made by a boomer in a long, emotionally driven rant overloaded with projection. The irony is lost on them. That we don't want to work. Are you kidding me? First of all, we want to work, but it's hard to work when you need to and paid internships to even get your foot in the door. Also that we don't want to buy houses. Many millennials grew up during the housing crisis. Houses aren't a great investment, they mean taking more loans, and the average salary of a 30 year old hasn't increased in 30 years, while everything else has. It's not as if no one can buy homes, a few of my friends do, but it's not a matter of not wanting something. Literal conversation I had with a friend once. I don't understand, if school is so expensive why don't you get a job that will help you pay for it? Everyone's hiring. Yes, Carol, they're hiring at minimum wage 20 hours a week. That doesn't cover rent, let alone an education. Don't forget about the expectation of 24 stroke 7 availability for a 20 per hour week job. My old boss had 3 sons my age, early mid 20s at the time, who didn't go to college and just worked part time jobs and fricked around all day on their parents dime. She attributed that to the millennial generation. She went on one day about how millennials just can't get out of bed and do work. They are opposed to do anything but play video games all day and get drunk at night with their friends. I said, well, some maybe, but everyone I know is working full time on a career track. She lost it, made some vague threats about me being useless and how I should be thankful to have this job based on my abilities. 20 minutes later I was showing her how to copy and paste documents onto a flash drive for the 10th time. They call you disrespectful when you won't let them disrespect you. I am personally a fan of the complaints about millennials being too incompetent to get a job, especially when it's coming from a person who has stubbornly held onto a position well past retirement age with an irrelevant, outdated skill set that would not get them hired if they were searching now. How long am I going to have to contend with superiors who can't figure out Microsoft Office? I think the worst one was a post where an older lady was saying that we were so impolite to say no problem when someone says thank you, instead of saying you're welcome. Let's meet halfway and start saying your problem. I am a student dentist. Had a baby boomer patient say that my generation of doctors relied too heavily on technology. This was in response to me looking up their medication on my iPad. You're right. We'll just put away this local anesthetic. Millennial are somehow both too sensitive and overexposed to lewd and or violent movies, shows, video games. Too sensitive in some things and overly desensitized in others. Avogado toast is the reason we aren't buying houses. Maybe it's because student loans are already as expensive as a mortgage? I wish I was in a position in life where something as small as food under $6, much cheaper at home made, was what's keeping me from buying an entire house. Millennials are too obsessed with phones. They're pocket devices that allow me to keep in contact with friends and access any information in the world. Frick yeah, I'm going to use my phone. My own mother went on a dinner date last week, took a picture of a couple my age on their phone during their date, and posted their picture on Facebook laughing at millennials. I told her that maybe they simply enjoy each other's company, and the fact that they're sitting together is nice enough without taking pictures of other couples on a date and insulting them. At family gatherings, all my baby boomer aunts and uncles are staring at their phones too. Probably the one that gets me the most is your generation is killing the chain restaurant business. Oh you mean we support small businesses and found somewhere better to spend a Friday night than at Applebee's or Chili's paying for overpriced food? Or you've got it so easy, everything you want is right at your fingertips with that cell phone. When in reality it's so much more dangerous to have a phone. On top of everything you could unwillingly see or find on the internet just one social media post could absolutely ruin your reputation, career family etc. We are under the microscope like no other generation before us.
I'll trade places with baby boomers and go to college for basically free and own a home before the age of 21 any day. Reddit what is the dumbest question a customer or client has ever asked you at your job? Working in the back of an ambulance on a patient with a serious need of nitroglycerine to lower their blood pressure. Sir, before I give this medication to you, I need to triple check that you have not taken any ED drugs in the last 72 hours like Viagra or Silas. Rattles off all variations. If you have taken it and I give you this nitroglycerine, your blood pressure could drop dangerously low. Have you taken any of these meds? Oh no, never. Are you certain? Oh yes, of course I am. Runs through potential deadly side effects again. No, never. Okay, hold this pill under your tongue. Does generic Viagra count? Gra. Why do you do this? Pharmacist here. I feel your pain. Why I sent them an invoice. Sigh. I work for an accounting firm. We did a project for them. Wrapped it up. And build it. A few months later. They came back with another project. So we did the work. And gave them a bill. They somehow thought that the new project was covered under the previous invoice. I get too many dumb questions to remember them all. Here's a dumb encounter that happened just yesterday. When sending confidential documentation, we would encrypt it and put a password on it. It's common practice to send the document and the password in two separate emails. I got a message from this guy saying he couldn't open the document I sent him. Me. Did you use the password? Client. Yes. It said there was an error. Me. What password did you use? Client. I just hit a K and it said that I had the wrong password. Me. Wait. So did you type anything in? Client. Well number. Me. Could you use the password that we provided you? Client. I didn't think it would work so I deleted the email. Me. I tried nothing and I'm all out of ideas. A group of 4 ladies sat on a table that is reserved for a group of regulars every day. Before I opened my mouth to let them know. One says we see a reserved sign but we are unsure exactly how reserved it is. Long time ago now. Got a call that a user's laptop was dead and wouldn't power on. I go and check it out. Press the button. No life. Plug it into the power. It starts charging. Press the button. It boots just fine. The user wasn't plugging the laptop into power because she thought we had wireless. Tried to diagnose someone's connection problem for 20 minutes before I overheard splashing and kids. Asked where they were and they were at a pool. They thought the office Wi-Fi extended to anywhere on the planet apparently. Mildly relevant. I used to work the counter in parts at Subaru and my manager was helping a customer. A rare occurrence for him. And he turned to me and asked me how many days do we have for a 45 day return? Selling paint. Woman wants to paint her fence. I give her advice and explain to her how to prepare the surface. She then asks. Do I need anything to apply the paint? I'm like a roller or a brush. She's like oh. I can just splash the paint on the fence. She was dead serious. Woman. This is not Looney Tunes. This is the real world. Vet tech. A lot of people think their dog's nipples are ticks. A lot. One man even pulled a but he's a boy on us. I used to work as a bank teller. A lady came up to me and asked to withdraw money. I informed her that she couldn't withdraw money because her account was overdrawn. She was immediately upset. So I had her account checked for fraud. She then explained that all those charges were hers and she wasn't expecting any payments. She was spending money she knew she didn't have. She then asked me why we couldn't just give her more money. This is my grandmother. She overdraws hundreds a month and couldn't understand why they wouldn't give her a loan. For my name. Not the question itself but the reason why he asked. I was volunteering as cashier at a used bookstore for the library. Not my regular job but I do it often. In comes this older fella who buys a big stack of books for like 10 bucks. He was really nice and chatty though he didn't seem completely aware mentally. Not a big deal. I just had to explain sales tax and the book pricing a couple times before he seemed to get it. He pays by credit card and I explain to him how to sign the touchscreen for the payment to go through. This is where he asks for my name. I tell him. He takes the iPad and says he really appreciated my service and happily tells me he's going to sign my name for the card so they will know to send the money to me. Before I can say no wait. He submitted the signature. 
I can't see his receipt but he keeps telling me I was great and to keep the change so I can assume he was being legit. I honestly wouldn't call it dumb. Just bizarre. Made me wonder if he's been signing cashier names the entire time he's had a credit card. Thank goodness the card companies never check those things. Thank goodness the card companies never check those things. I remember reading this story about this guy, maybe it was a reddit comment, about this guy who consistently signed his receipts with a doodle of a dong. The first time he decided to be a grown up and signed his actual name, the bank contacted him because they were concerned about possible fraud. A co-worker at a video store asked does this calculator do math? No, unfortunately all it does is roll cigarettes. When I asked for here or to go I got a confused look followed by what would you recommend? Definitely to go. Can we open the curtains to make the screen brighter? While pointing at a projector and screen setup, she seriously thought that more light in the room would make everything brighter as if the projection was some sort of moving painting. I work in AV. I can confirm I've gotten this. Also I get this doesn't look like it does on my computer. Of course projecting light looks different than in LED display, especially when you rent the cheapest projector for the biggest screen size. I worked at Kinkus and on three separate occasions different people angrily asked me why I returned their fax documents to them. They thought that a fax machine was some kind of Willy Wonka thing that sent their original piece of paper to the recipient. A few years ago, far more recent than it should be, I had to send a document to the local council. They asked me to fax it, I asked if I could just scan and email it and they said no because we need the original. I used to work in a call center for a large bank and a customer phoned while he was in one of the branches and said the queue was too big so he wanted me to help him. I asked what his query was and he said the ATM was broke so he had to withdraw cash. I asked how I could possibly help him withdraw cash from the bank over the phone and he said why can't you just fax it to me? So apparently a lot of people out there think fax machines are the Star Trek transporter. C. How much is this? Me. 50 C. Like the sticker says. C. And this one? Me. One dollar. All the items have labels on them with how much they cost. C. Oh is that what those mean? That's clever. Not the slightest bit of sarcasm in their voice. I pressed slightly and found they were genuinely unaware of price labels. You met a time traveler. Renovating a major hospital when the owner changes their mind again and wants to change the plan after we've started construction. You guys can take care of that right, with no extra cost? Oh, and the end date won't change, will it? We sure as frick can't Steve, and it sure as frick will. Those changes are gonna cost another $100,000. And now we need to go buy completely different materials and figure out what the frick you're talking about. The schedule is frick now. This is why construction never ends on the first given end date. While towing his car to a dealership, so what do you do for a living? He was serious. He assumed I had another job because I didn't fit the Billy Bob persona he associated with tow truck drivers. I did this with a realtor that was showing me a few houses. I'm a realtor. That makes sense. I just got lost in the small talk and had a brain fart. Library. Once I checked out several books to a woman and told her the return date. She looked at her friend, then back at me, and said, Shocked, you mean I have to bring the books back? Similar but opposite. At a bookstore I worked at we changed our return policy from 1 month to 14 days and so many customers angrily shouted that they can't possibly finish a book that fast. We calmly told them that's the point. We aren't the library. When you buy a book it's to keep. I used to work in computer sales and repairs. Had a customer come up who was maybe 23 years old saying she couldn't get her laptop to open something. So I take it, and open it and casually ask, what is it you can't get open? She looks at me shocked as I open the laptop screen and tells, I have been trying for hours to get IT to open how do you do that? I look at her not knowing how to respond and close it and open it again. She takes it and walks out saying thank you. I took a long look at my computer I was working on and decided that this was the moment that made me quit that job. I work at an Italian restaurant and this guy was looking at ordering a salad, and when I asked what dressing he wanted he kept going back to the pasta sauces and asking Sugo, that would be good on it wouldn't it, I'll get that and I tried to explain sir, those are for the pastas, 
you got the Mediterranean salad and he responded you're right, maybe carbonara, another sauce, I don't get what he wasn't understanding, he seemed like a normal smart dude but he just couldn't comprehend the difference between the dressings and sauces. I work in pharma and someone called yelling at me to stop selling her son weed. I think she took the definition drug company way too literally. I worked at a Mongolian restaurant that served white rice. A guest honestly did not know what rice was when I offered him some. I had to explain it as those little white things. After 10 seconds of me trying to figure out if he was just messing with me, he looked at me still confused and I just said never mind. Someone once asked me why are you guys making it so difficult to find a car parking spot this time of year it was Christmas time, and I was a casual working in a tiny store in a huge shopping center. I didn't even know what to say. Because we hate you. Library clerk here. Do you have a phone book for celebrity phone numbers? No, sir. No we don't. I worked at Old Navy and an elderly lady walked in and asked where the boats were. She had never been inside an Old Navy and assumed it was some sort of boating store. Not a question, but someone once effectively told me they were allergic to air. I used to work in an optician's where we'd carry out pressure tests, a few puffs on air onto the surface of your eye, where quite literally, the machine just blows your eye with, yup, air. The customer was Adam and she was allergic to it, couldn't have it done and in fact accused me of no knowing what I was talking about. I see you met my grandma. This one was just 2 hours ago. One of my users came today with an iPad. When I asked what the problem was, she said that when she holds the power button and home button down for 10 seconds, it just shuts off and takes a minute to restart. That was her whole problem. That if she holds the power button, it turns off. She called it the freaking power button. I used to work at a fine jewelry kiosk in a mall. Our jewelry included items like gold bracelets and necklaces bonded with sterling silver, sterling silver rings with cubic zirconia gems, gold engagement rings with diamond chips clustered together rather than one large diamond, etc. I had a lot of regulars, and this one woman would come in often and ask of every item she was interested in, is this real I explained what bonded means and how we don't sell diamond rings for $25 but that the rings were indeed certified sterling silver with synthetic gems. I gave her information like this over and over again, day after day, and she would follow up every explanation with, okay, but, is it real? It's a real ring, yes. I used to work at a grocery store deli. My co-worker for some reason got more stupid questions than anyone else. We'd swap stories every shift. But one went a little like this. Hi, what can I get you? The 8 piece chicken. How many pieces are in it? How? How many pieces are in the 8 piece chicken? Um, there are 8 pieces in the 8 piece chicken. Okay, I'll have that, please. To be fair, the lady was awfully polite but how many pieces are in the 8 piece chicken is still a stupid question. Can I have chicken medium rare? No no you cannot. I once had the exact same thing happen. Girl, can I have the steak? Medium rare please. Guy, I would like the chicken. Medium rare as well please. Me, I can't do that sir. That's salmonella. Then she had to explain why you can't eat chicken medium rare. Whenever I answer the phone I have to say good morning afternoon and then our hotel name. So many people interrupt me halfway through this to ask if they called the correct hotel. Some even after I just said that. I work in a bank. Actually not even a bank. It's an advice center so no cash or anything like that. Not that anyone reads the signs on the way in. Had a pair of women come in and one says that the other is visiting from France and needs to check how much is in her account and can I tell her. I ask if she's a customer of this bank. Thinking maybe she's a student learning English and has set up an account because that's quite common. But no. She wanted me to tell her the balance in her French bank account. How do people go around having no idea what's going on? Work at a zoo. And one year they did a big TV advert to highlight night zoo since we are open until 9pm during summer. At around noon a woman asked me where was the night zoo. I said here but in 6 hours. Working as a flight attendant. London to Miami in business class. 
Mum with one toddler and one five year old boards, immediately spots me, and asks where is the crash. I'd like to clarify, my airline does not and has never offered childcare on board. She was adamant we should and continued to palm her children off on the crew for the rest of the flight. Luckily the kids were fairly quiet. The crash is beside the swimming pool. I won't get into my job but I am routinely asked what 80% or 85% of £100,000 is. I work at an independent pet store. We sell mostly dog supplies. But there's a small section of cat toys catnip etc. A new, pretty jimmicky item we brought in is a line of catnip that is packaged to look like medical weed. There are the prescription bottles and pre-rolled joints. Now, the people know these are catnip products. But I've had multiple people ask, after puzzling over the pack of raw paper rolled catnip joints, but, how does the cat smoke it or, how can they even hold the lighter? They've got paws. I never do quite know how to reply besides muddled laughter. I work in a poker room at the front counter. Him. Can we get a table? Me. Sure. What would you like to play? Him. No. For dinner. Me. Looking around. We don't serve food here. This is a poker room. Him. Grumbles and walks away. I worked at Wendy's through high school and part of college. One day, a man in his 50s wearing a bright magenta suit walked in and ordered a burger. I asked him do you want a combo, or just the sandwich and he asked what is a combo. I explained to him that it was a sandwich with fries and a drink, but somehow he didn't understand. He looked at me blankly and asked I want fries and a drink, but what is the combo. We went back and forth on this for like 5 minutes. I don't even remember if he ever got what a combo was, or if he ended up getting it. I do remember. However, that I saw him two weeks later in a different city at my other job training political canvassers. He was wearing the same magenta suit. I was in such shock that I just stared at him, saying nothing, thinking, it's the combo guy. Do you guys sell ice here? No sir, sorry about that. Alright yeah got anything like ice? Comma um, what? Got any UHH real cold water? Had a customer ask for a 100% lead crystal decanter. I had just explained to him what 20% lead crystal meant. No you can't get 100% lead cause it wouldn't be crystal and also it'll kill you. Worked at a small fine dining steakhouse in high school. The restaurant closed at 10pm. And one day a table decided to take their sweet time with everything. So it was now 12.30am. And I still had homework to finish in school the next day. One prick at the table asks man. I bet you really want us to get out of here don't you ya no crap. But I couldn't tell him I did. I told him well. While I have school in a 6 hours. Providing good service means treating every customer as if they're your first one of the night. Shot myself in the foot right there. They didn't leave until almost 2am. And I was late to school the next day. I'm surprised your manager let that slide. People don't believe that I'm a sushi delivery guy because I'm white. In high school a while back I worked at a Tim Hortons and we were advertising that we had just put in free Wi-Fi. Old guy at the drive through asked for a free Wi-Fi. We asked him again and he repeated himself. It wasn't for a few seconds we realized he didn't know what Wi-Fi was and thought it was some sort of free promotional item. Maybe not necessarily dumb on his part but it was really funny and turned into an inside joke at the store. My dad was a park ranger, RIP Pops. He had many hilarious stories. The best was when he was just starting out at the Grand Canyon. He hadn't learned the finer points of customer service nor the depths of people's stupidity yet. A visitor made a comment on a ranger led to of the rim that the Grand Canyon must have made a tremendous noise when it popped open dad said, yeah, imagine the noise it'll make when it slams shut the visitor was not amused. Worked at Best Buy and the two dumbest ones are these. Dude, where are your heavy duty TVs at? Me. Is it going in a business? Thinking he means it'll be on at all times? Like at a bar. Dude, no it's going in my living room. Me. What are you planning to use this for? Dude, for watching. What else? Me. Sorry, I'm just confused why it needs to be heavy duty then. Dude, well I dunno. You tell me. You all are the ones advertising these HD TVs. Second one. Dude, these are LED TVs? Me. Yep. Dude, they run on electricity? Me. As opposed to. Dude, I dunno. Me. Yes sir. They still need electricity. 
you have been visited by the wisdom papa type study well papa or you will fail your next text at school. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check out another video. Or don't. Either way, have a great day you magnificent people.